Hi, I'm Django Ronkat, and I'm here to let you know that we have a very special guest on the station wagon. We have Pete Bernhardt from The Devil Makes Three. So tune in at noon on Sunday at ShadyPinesRadio.com and check it out. Bye. Welcome aboard the station wagon on Shady Pines Radio. (laughs) Hot diggity dog. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Brian. And I'm Callie. And uh, we're on the station wagon. Just uh, we're cruising around uh, Vermont right now. Yeah, we decided to take a little road trip to Vermont. Yeah, and wouldn't you know it? We just happened to come across Pete Bernhard. Yeah, our, from the Devil Mix Three. Our good friend Pete. Yeah, he's just he was just on the side of the road. So we're like, hey, you need a ride? And he's like, yeah, I guess. Um, and you know, he didn't have his guitar on him, so we just decided to have a, a little chat. 
And uh, we're going to talk with him about his new album. He just came out with a solo album called Harmony Ascension Division. Yeah, it just came out uh, April 20th, 2020. Yeah, and I I downloaded that uh, on 420 and and listened to it uh, very heartily with a stoned mind. And uh, it is a great record. A stoned mind and a stoned heart. (laughs) Yes, (laughs) indeed. And uh, yeah, you know, and he he was kind enough to chat with us for a little while and let us... Uh, hit the record button so uh you know let's just chat with uh pete bernard yeah and just let everybody know he he is currently in the station wagon with us right now but we're all masked we're all safe you know yeah 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 it's uh it definitely wasn't just a zoom call he's actually in the car right now yeah we're all here together um so please enjoy uh our conversation with Pete Bernhard of The Devil Makes Three. Uh, this was quite an honor. He's one of our favorite musicians. Actually, me and Callie, we kind of met because of The Devil Makes Three in a way. We kind of, uh, it was a, like one of the first things that we realized we had in common was uh, an appreciation for the music of The Devil Makes oh, Three. Oh, yeah. And it's probably, um, The Devil Makes Three is probably the band I've seen more in my life than any other band. And might be the same for you as well it it absolutely is i can definitely say that without knowing the exact the exact numbers it's definitely true and if you haven't gone to a devil makes three show uh when tours start back again i highly recommend it it is uh the most fun show in my in my experience that i've been to oh my god it's such a good show it's such a good show Devil Make Three! Yeah. All right, guys. So check it out. We're going to chat with Pete Bernhard. About his uh, his solo album that just came out. Um, uh, Harmony Ascension Division. Yeah. Up on Spotify. And also you can just buy it off of thedevilmakes3.com. Yeah. Pete Bernhard! Woo! All right. Uh, we're here on the station wagon with Pete Bernhard of The Devil Makes Three, and we're going to chat with him a little bit about his new solo album, Harmony Ascension Division, which came out uh, back in April of this year, and uh, also just about what you've been up to lately, Pete. How's it going? Good, good. How are you guys doing? Pretty good. So, I know The Devil Makes Three from uh, back when I lived in Santa Cruz. You guys were local to that area at the time. I'm um, just wondering where you're at nowadays. I live back in my uh, home area of New England. I live in Vermont. Um, we were in Santa Cruz for over 10 years. I'd say it was really like the birthplace of the band. Um, but uh, eventually, when my parents started getting a little older, I moved back to Vermont to be closer to them. And I've been there ever since. How long ago did you move back to Vermont? You know, it's actually coming up on almost 10 years now. Um, probably it's a little closer to seven. But um, yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while that I've been back. And I mean, until, uh, you know, touring was put on hiatus here i was probably in santa cruz about twice or three times a year yeah oh cool um so where uh like when and how did you meet your bandmates cooper and lucia my understanding is you met cooper mcbean first like uh, back in like grade school or something back in vermont yeah we're actually all from vermont me lucia and cooper so yeah i met both of them um well i met cooper in grade school i met lucia in high school um, yeah, and we're all, we're all Vermonters. We're all from the same, not even just Vermonters. We're all from the same County. Oh, how, cool. How did you guys start playing music together? Well, me and Cooper were buddies back in our like early punk rock days when we just discovered punk music and stuff. And, uh, we actually, I was just thinking about how we used to just like drive around in his, um, old Toyota Tercel that was like pretty messed up, but had an AM radio. We would listen to the oldie station mm-hmm. and, um, yeah, we really like got into punk rock and, uh, and we, we always loved oldies and old, old rock and roll, but Cooper ended up going out to Olympia, Washington and joining another band. And by the time I got out there, he was already in that band. So we kind of played together on the side and uh, I lived in Olympia, Washington for about a year or two. And then um, when that band broke up, me and Cooper started playing as a duo. And then we went down to Santa Cruz on a duo tour, more like a road trip with some shows. And um, we actually broke down in Santa Cruz. And Lucia, who was going to UC Santa Cruz at the time, she lent us her car so that we could finish the tour and go down to Arizona. And when we brought the car back, we were like, why are we going back to Washington? Um, (laughs) 
let's just stay in Santa Cruz. <laughs> yeah, weather's weather's considerably better there. Yes. Yep, pretty much. Uh, so I was just curious uh, if you guys are all still collaborating as a band during this time, maybe virtually or in person. Uh, well, you know, we all live in different places, so the in-person thing's not really possible. Um, and, you know, to be perfectly honest, like virtual just doesn't really, it's not really the same. Yeah. Um, so I could say, no, we're not really doing that right now. We're just kind of taking some time off until we could actually be in the same room. It's difficult because, yeah, you know, we're all, we're all sort of spread out all over the country. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's difficult. It's really difficult to get together. I mean, honestly, it was pretty difficult before. Yeah. <laughs> but uh now it's way more so so yeah for the time being we're not really doing that i have seen bands doing things like you know online um where they're all in there you know like we're doing this interview right now mm -hmm. but i mean you know i don't know for a band practice it's it's pretty it's pretty tough to not be actually physically in the same space yeah, yeah. then you have the uh there's like delay issues as totally. well yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like being in the studio with like some some latency problems yeah. you know <laughs> <laughs> totally um so uh the new album is called harmony ascension division uh I will just say I absolutely love it. I got it uh, on 420 and uh, smoked up a fat bowl and listened to it. And um, awesome! Yeah, absolutely <laughs> loved it. Um, so um, was this uh, was this record? I seem to remember like you posting about working on this record before lockdown happened. But I was wondering if the quarantine kind of expedited the process. If you were able to kind of focus on finishing up the record because of the lockdown. Yeah, honestly, a hundred percent. I wouldn't have done it probably if if the band could have been getting together and playing or touring. I mean, I, we had a really really busy year planned, um, and you know, all of it got canceled. So I just sort of found myself at home and not being able to you know collaborate with my bandmates. Um, yeah, it really gave me the opportunity to do it, and plus, you know, I could do it myself. Um, which was the only way to kind of keep playing. And I think it really helped me to sort of deal with the fact that, you know, I've, I've never had this much time off in my entire life. Yeah. So um, it gave me, gave me a project. And, yeah, I've been on the back burner for a long time. Um, there's always songs that I have that I want to record uh, solo, and it just gave me that opportunity, you know. It's like the right moment. Kind of a weird time to release an album, obviously. Totally, yeah. <laughs> and it was recorded in Vermont, too, obviously, because that's where you're at. Yep, yeah, it had to be. It was recorded in my friend's uh, home studio called North Pond Sound and yeah, it was really a fun project and uh and yeah, it gave me gave me some way to sort of focus my my attention. Cool. And um the songs themselves were they songs that had been sitting around for a while or partially finished or were they things that you specifically wrote that you knew were going to be kind of solo uh songs? Yeah, they were they were definitely uh, slated to be solo songs for sure. Some of them had been around for a little while, but a lot of them I just wrote in the studio, which was uh, really fun because I don't usually have uh, that luxury. Um, you know, when we're doing a record for the band, there's usually, you know, we need to get the record done. We have a, a limited amount of time in the studio, a limited amount of time off the road. So this was like, there was absolutely, you know, there's no pressure to to uh, get things done quick. So a lot of the songs, yeah, I just wrote in the studio, which was really fun. You know, I just go in and put down, um, you know, ideas every day and see where it went. Cool. All right. So we're going to play um, the first song here, Can't Find You, from Harmony Ascension Division. Can you tell us a little bit about this tune before we get into it? Sure, yeah, that song was really, really fun to write. Um, this whole album's kind of been inspired by uh, a lot of solo um, singer-songwriters. And some of my favorite ones, I mean, one of my favorite albums that I've been listening to a lot was an album of demos that Willie Nelson did. Oh, cool. Uh, it's just Willie Nelson and a guitar, or sometimes Willie Nelson and a guitar and a pedal steel. And it was a big inspiration. And, you know, Willie Nelson writes such a good heartbreak song. Yep. And, and that's exactly what this one was and, and inspired very much by him. All right. Here's Can't Find You by Pete Bernhard off of Harmony Ascension Division. Check it out. <laughs> I 
I've got a racetrack running through my brain. Don't know the driver who's moving in the passing lane, and I can feel the crash is coming. Heartbeats at a time. Backseat driving, trying to stay between the lines. If I can't find you. I can find whiskey. Take me to the river, the river downtown. If I can't find you, I can find whiskey. Take me to the river, the river downtown. Let the weight of the water take my troubles on down. Has stopped blowing. Took us from town to town. If we knew where we were going, we'd be there by now. And I know that you'll find another. I know that'll make you smile. Give my regards to the next guy. I was him for a little while. If I can't have you. I can have whiskey. Take me to the river, the river downtown. If I can't have you, I can have whiskey. Take me to the river, river downtown. Don't like the way I'm living. Heavy lines and loose connections. Something just quietly died. I sure ain't no doctor, but the good Lord knows I've tried. And if you need forgiveness, I'm not the one to ask. A sign that points to no return has long since slid on past. If I can't find you. And I can't find whiskey. Take me to the river, the river downtown. If I can't find you, and I can't find whiskey, take me to the river, the river to drown. Take me out the water. Put me under the ground. Put me under the ground. So we're here with Pete Bernhardt from The Devil Makes Three. His new solo album, Harmony Ascension Division, is out now. And uh, so your latest, the latest Devil Makes Three release was a live album recorded at Red Rocks in Colorado. What inspired you guys to do your live album at that particular venue? Um, well, we've been trying to do it there for a long time and we sort of got, you know, got the okay, uh, to record there. It, it's such like historic place, obviously, you know, so many great people have played there and it just sounds great. And, uh, we, we usually, when we play Red Rocks, we usually do it at the end of a tour. So we'll go out and we'll, we'll play any new material we have, you know, we'll practice, we'll get the band playing together really well. And then we do the show at Red, Red Rocks as sort of the culmination of the tour. Um, and we've done that, I guess, three times or something like that. And we've always thought, oh, we should record this live, but we never, we actually did uh, another live recording, but due to some technical difficulties, it just didn't really come out releasable. So this was, uh, it was a long time in the works and, um, yeah, I'm really happy with how that record came out. That was probably, I would say, our best show at Red Rocks. Awesome. Yeah, man. I, I love um, I love that venue so much. It's just gorgeous and uh, sounds great. Um, just a really cool, special place. Yeah, it's one of a kind. 
Um, yeah, so I'm thinking, let's play a tune from that record. Um, this song is definitely a, a standout for me. I think this might have been the first one you guys released as a teaser for Chains Are Broken, if I'm not mistaken. And um, I just remember being like, wow, that's, that is different, and I dig it. Um, it's called uh, Paint My Face, and uh, this is from Live at Red Rocks, also on the last Devil Makes 3 studio album, Chains Are Broken. Check it out. Come paint my face, take my hand. I do not wish you to understand. Someday you too will go to war. And by that time, may you not fear death anymore. Fortune may hold you, she's not your friend. Kind words spoken, vows depend. Vowless creature may wear the sweetest smile. Oh, do not fear, for I will see you in a while. Come paint my face, come take my hand. I do not wish you to understand. Someday you too. Yeah, I love that track. Dude, yes, that song is so cool. Um, what Can you tell us anything about that song? It's just so interesting to me. Yeah, sure. I mean, that song, well, that was a really, really fun song to write. Um, me and Lucia kind of worked on that a lot together uh, in the studio because um, obviously the bass line kind of drives the tune. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then that riff uh, was something that we kind of came to, you know, together as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that song was really, really fun to play. And, uh, you know, the, the story of the song is a bit strange. I mean, you know, you listen to a song, you can get any impression you want, obviously. But I was when I was writing that song, I was thinking a little bit about reincarnation. Yeah. Um, and sort of like, you know, how... Uh, I mean, I personally do believe in reincarnation. So, um, you know, I was thinking about people living multiple lives and that's kind of what that, that song was about. You know, right. it was about that, that possibility. I guess we'll all have to see when we get there, but I personally do believe in it. So painting, painting your face kind of being a metaphor for like, uh, putting on a new skin or something like that. 
Yeah, it's a bit like that. It's also just about like um, maybe potential other lives that you've already lived or lives that you will live after this one. You know what I mean? Right on. Um, yeah. All right. Well, you, you kind of touched on this, um, but um, one of my most memorable shows, you, you said maybe your most memorable show was the uh, Red Rock show. Uh, one for me was definitely um, when I went to the recording of Stomp and Smash at the Mystic Theater in Petaluma. Um, oh, that was also a blast. Yeah, yeah. we actually uh, we went to both nights and uh, it was it was so fucking cool. Um, and uh, my, my follow up question was going to be, do you have a favorite performance or most memorable show, which you've kind of already answered? But are there any others that are kind of standouts for you? Wow. I mean, there's been so many, so many great shows. It's hard to choose just one. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think, yeah, like I said, playing at Red Rocks was definitely really, really big um, for us. Uh, actually, <laughs> one time I had a girl swear that her favorite show she ever saw us play was when we opened for the Pogues. And I was like, uh, we never opened for the Pogues. But <laughs> if we had, that would have been great. <laughs> I was like, I wish we did that. That sounds like my favorite show. Oh, um, but yeah, I mean, I'd say playing at Red Rocks was really big. Uh, really enjoyed that. Also, you know, uh, opening up for Willie Nelson and Allison Krauss was really, really fun as well. Um, yeah, you know, it's hard to choose one show. I had a great time at that show at the Mystic as well. That was a blast. Um, and that's kind of the reason why we like to do live recordings is because you just never know what show is going to be great. And, um, you know, so we always try and keep that tradition going. I mean, who knows, you know, the next show might be the best one we've ever done. <laughs> um, so... I was curious, um, how do you decide what's going to be on a Devil Makes Three album or a solo album? Yeah, because like, it seems like you write a lot of songs. How do you decide like what's going to be what? Um, well, you know, usually you could tell pretty quickly if something's going to click with the band or if it's not. Right. Um, you know, we've been playing together a long time. So, you know, there's just some songs that, you know, you start playing them and everybody sort of figures out what they want to do really quickly. And it's it's somewhat smooth you know and other songs it just doesn't happen that way obviously too i mean like with this last record i just recorded a lot of the songs that don't make it to the band are a lot more mellow right you know they don't have like a really solid rhythm to them they don't have drums you know there isn't like a strong backbeat um they might be sad songs as well although i definitely written some sad songs for the devil makes three um but they tend to like separate themselves, you know what I mean? Yeah. I just have to like wait and they, they'll separate themselves into their appropriate groups. <laughs> yeah. Well, one that was kind of a pleasant surprise for me was Pray for Rain because that was on one of your solo records. And then Devil Makes Three, you guys did it together and it just brought a totally different life to that same song. Yeah, that was great, actually. And I've got a few other songs like that, too, that I've always wanted to do with the band that are that are songs that I I feel like, you know, they would be even better if we did them with the band. But like for whatever reason at the time I recorded them by myself, maybe because we were too busy or who knows why. Yeah. But yeah, I have a couple other songs like that, too. You know, it's like sometimes um, sometimes like the choice is hard to make for sure. So uh, the next song we're going to play is uh, Fool's Gold. And for me personally, when I was listening to it, it, I just I feel like it would make a good Devil Makes Three song. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I just could hear some like bass and drums and stuff behind it. But uh, can you tell us a little bit about the song before we play it? Yeah, sure. I mean, Fool's Gold, uh, obviously the title kind of says it all. Um, but, you know, I think it's just about... Uh, my one of my favorite themes is like um you know relationship disaster so uh i think it's just a song about something sort of seeming as though it's just like it's just too good to be the real thing and then you know eventually it turns out that's because it is <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you know uh which can happen uh you know I, i've had that experience myself um, but also, too, about how, you know, sometimes people, I think, are a little bit predestined by previous relationships to act out things that maybe, you know, lead to that eminent disaster. My friend Alan used to always say, all relationships are destined to fail. Um, 
which you know is true until until they're not right like there's one that isn't but um so i guess this fool's gold is just a just a a story about um yeah thinking something not all that glitters is gold right on all right well let's hear it uh this is fool's gold by pete bernhard off of his new solo record harmony ascension division check it out just tuning in we're here on the station wagon with pete bernhard of the devil mix three uh and we just heard fool's gold from his new album harmony ascension division um so i remember reading not too long ago that you were gifting copies of this record to frontline healthcare workers can you tell us a little bit about just what inspired that for you yeah it's holy god man i sent out a ton it was awesome i actually you know being in the music industry you sometimes start to feel like people don't actually want physical copies of anything anymore <laughs> which of course for us is a big drag yeah. but uh but they do they totally do which is great i mean like cds and vinyl as well um so yeah i mean it was just a way to try and give back you know, I have friends here, you know, locally who work in the healthcare industry and, you know, everybody's obviously really worried about the situation with the, with the, you know, with COVID virus and everything and yeah. everybody's being careful. And then, you know, I have these friends who they're just working every day. They're working in the hospital every day. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, I'm like, I'm really in a situation where, you know, obviously I would love to be out there touring. And it's not possible, but they don't—they don't really have a choice, 
they have to do it. So yeah, it was just a way to kind of try and give back to people. And I just put it out there and actually I put it out there again. Like if anybody's listening to this and they work in, um, yeah, they work in the hospital, they're nurses, they do any kind of healthcare work, just get in touch with me. I'll send you a record. Awesome. Oh yeah. You were also asking, um, for people to send you a photo for that as well. Were you going to use this collection of photos for something in the future? To be honest, I just put them up online. Like everybody nice. who sent me a photo, uh, I just put them up online saying, thanks, you know, yeah. um, and I would do the same thing. Anybody else who sent them in? Yeah, I just put them up online and said, hey, thank these people for what they're doing and uh, and sent out all the records. Yeah. And I hope I hope I want to do it again. Um, I want to press this record onto vinyl. And when I press it onto vinyl, I'm going to try and do it again. Cool. I will be picking up a copy <laughs> of that. Um, so... We've already talked about how you are kind of like, you're on a break now from uh, performing. And I'm just curious if you miss the road life, if you're enjoying the break. Um, I mean, I'd say it's a little bit of both, you know. I mean, I've been touring pretty much my entire adult life. Um, so, you know, having a break isn't bad, but I mean, it's also, man, you know, I miss, I miss traveling. A lot. I'm really used to traveling. I've, yeah. I've spent most of my life traveling, and uh, not traveling is weird. I know that. Um, yeah, I know that most people are very used to it. I think for me, it's the opposite. I'm used to moving around a lot, and uh, yeah. So I mean, I definitely miss. Uh, there's something about, like I said, you know, you can't get the same thing out of like playing a show with your bandmates on the internet as you do with playing with a crowd, a real crowd in front of you. And especially our band and, and myself as a performer, like, you know, if the audience is really there and really engaged in the show, we will do a better job, you know? And it really is like a symbiotic thing between us and the audience. And I think most musicians feel that way. Yeah. Um, Have you, you tried know, any of the like uh, live streaming performances at all? Uh, I've done a little bit of it, but honestly, yeah, it's just like not the same. It's yep. just not the same for me. I mean, I really, I really feed off of the audience and the crowd being there and, and the fun of, of like that, that, you know, feeling in the room of people being there to see the show. I mean, I really think like, you know, it's not just the performers getting on stage and playing. Like for me, it really is like the audience, you know, the audience participation in the show that makes the show great. Um, and that's actually the reason why I love punk music so much when I was a kid is that, you know, it was sort of like full contact uh, uh, show going. And, you know, people were participating to the maximum amount yep. that was possible. I, I've definitely moshed at some Devil Makes 3 shows. I'm not going to lie. I've, I've definitely left those shows sweatier than I've been at any other show I've been to. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> Right. Yeah, that's the idea. That's the idea. So, yeah, I haven't I haven't done too many shows. I haven't done too many things online. Um, yeah just for that reason, you know, but I, I really do miss that. I miss that, um, you know, that, that feedback from the audience and just the fun feeling of having people in a club. Uh, I also want to follow up this question with, uh, how have you been spending your time in quarantine? Well, you know, man, I've been doing all sorts of different stuff. To be honest, I've been doing a lot of work, um, just on my house. I've been doing, I've been doing everything that I didn't have time to do for the past 10 years. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I've been doing a lot of construction projects um, on my house, fixing a lot of things that are broken, uh, building stuff, did a ton of gardening this year, um, like a lot of photography and other art stuff, a lot of writing. Um, yeah, you know, it's kind of like playing catch up for, for all those years. Right on, man. Well, we've got like a, a question and maybe a question and a half left for you, and we'll let you go. But um, obviously, the future is pretty uncertain right now uh, with the virus and everything. Uh, there's some reason to be optimistic with uh, the news of the vaccine and everything. But yeah, I was wondering if you have any future musical plans that you can tell us about. Well, yeah, I mean, like you said, it's sort of hard to know, you know. I mean, I think we're, we're sort of in a holding pattern right now just sort of to see what's going to happen. Um, you know, it's like, it's hard to make plans when you don't know what's next. Uh, you know, we, like I said, we had a really, really busy year planned with, um, music festivals and projects and recording and stuff like that. And, you know, if everything goes well, I mean, you know, we'll probably just sort of pick that up where we left it off. Um, but we've been really reluctant to reschedule 
Yeah. Because, you know, so many bands I've seen reschedule and then it's just like another cancellation. And, you know, we already had to do that once to all our fans and I feel bad about it. You know, I mean, there was nothing we could do, but a lot of people had tickets and, you know, we had to cancel those shows and I don't want anybody to get tickets or, or, you know, get their hopes up until we know we're going to actually stand on that stage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, so uh, I'm going to ask you a wild card question. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. If you could travel back in time, when would you travel to and why? Wow, that's an interesting question. Huh. Well, I guess I'd want to see the world before, like, uh, he, before industrialized society it would be pretty cool to see the world before, like, we had any of the effect on it that we've had now. That would be amazing just from an environmental perspective. But I would also really like to see like the Industrial Revolution as well. So I guess those are sort of two (laughs) sides of the same coin. Yeah, I'd really like to see that. I feel like there was so much cool stuff. I've done a lot of reading about, you know, the Industrial Revolution and the beginning of unionization in America and stuff like that. And and, uh, I would love to see what it was like to live during that time when everything was sort of being built and you know certain movements were being built i mean that would have been amazing too yeah i guess those would be my my two um i don't think i'm, I'm not going all the way back to the dinosaurs or anything that's all <laughs> that, that could be dangerous yeah well cool um Man, Pete, thank you so much for taking the time. This has been really cool for us, uh, both being just big fans of your work. So thanks again for uh, for taking the time to be with us on the station wagon. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. And can I ask, why'd you name it the station wagon? I like that name. Well, so uh, Shady Pines Radio is actually our quarantine project. So we have this um, this media company. We were doing like videos and studio recordings for uh, artists, mostly local ones in Portland and some traveling ones. And um yeah, so basically when quarantine hit, we had to stop all that stuff. We had some events also, like regular open mics that we had to stop. And so we were like, all right, what are we going to do with all this uh, energy and all these artists and stuff we know? And we decided to start a radio station. So that's how we started Shady Pines Radio. And this is the station wagon is just kind of a play off of radio station. And I don't know, station wagons are cool. Yeah, we, taking taking the show on the road, so to speak. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Pick, <laughs> that's cool. Well, that's great, man. I'm glad you guys uh, got a good project going during quarantine. I'm glad you're like keeping keeping motivated and doing stuff out there. And you know, I'm I'm obviously trying to do the same thing. Yeah, man. Thanks for being a part of it today. This was really really fun. All right, cool. Hey, well, that's great. I hope that like someday we could do something where, you know, I'm in the studio playing live or the band comes in and plays or something, uh, you know? Uh, that was the question. That was the question. I look I was... forward to uh, being able to do normal shit like that. Yeah, yeah, that was the question I was too nervous to ask, but since you brought it up, we would love, anytime you're in Portland, we would be so stoked to have you guys do something in our studio, like a video project or something. That would be great. That would be awesome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, Portland's one of my favorite places to play. I mean, yeah, our shows there have been so good for so long. It's yeah. it's always a blast. Well, next time you guys uh, get back on the stage, we will definitely be there uh, in the audience. So. All right, cool. Well, thanks a lot for uh, taking the time and playing both records. And um, wish you guys the best of luck, man. Yeah, thanks again, Pete. Thank you, you too. So take care. All right, take care. See you guys later. All right, bye-bye. Bye. Wow, man, what a guy that Pete Bernhard. That was that was awesome. That, that was, was swell. That was real cool to be able to talk to uh, uh, just one of my favorite songwriters of all time. Honestly, Pete Bernhard of the Devil Makes Three. Yeah. So check out his uh, his new album, uh, Harmony Ascension Division. Harmony Ascension Division. And uh, if you're a healthcare worker, I would uh, highly recommend taking him up on that offer. Yeah, reach out to Pete He'll Bernhardt. Just send you a free copy of it, like I think a physical copy of his of his album. He'll send it to you. So yeah, uh, yeah, just as a thank you to the healthcare workers out there. That is so awesome. And uh, so after after we say goodbye, uh, we're gonna play some more Pete Bernhardt songs, some more Devil Makes Three songs. Yeah, let's just play some of our favorite Devil Makes Three and Pete Bernhardt songs. That yeah. sounds great. And then uh, tonight at 8 o'clock, we're going to go back on the air. We're playing your songs on Nocturnal Submissions. So if you'd like to send us a song for uh, a future week, 
just click on that send us a song button up there on your player or mm-hmm. on shadypinesradio.com. And the music doesn't stop ever here on Shady Pines Radio. We have, uh, after this show, we have the Groove Family Hour with uh, Andy. And then after that, we have Eric's Music Room, followed by the Soju Hour, followed by the Root Note. Followed by just something we choose, Shady Pines Rewind. We'll choose something we love. Oh, yeah. The and Groove Family Hour that comes after this is always just playing some, like, really awesome, like, just, well, what kind of music? It's like rootsy. Uh, well, he's, and- he's, uh, he's got Nashville uh, roots, I think, and uh, he lives in Portland now, but he's uh, he, he, he he's recorded a bunch of Nashville artists and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, but it's that. not, like, country. It's just, like, good a little bit of everything direct to vinyl sort of stuff and uh yeah so stay tuned if you enjoyed this and uh keep tuning in to shady pines radio we love you and uh we'll see you later on tonight but first we're gonna play a few more songs here by the devil makes three and pete bernhard before we go thanks for listening to ready kelly ready brian (gasps) the station wagon on shady pines radio (laughs) 